Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my new video. It's Hypno here. I really hope you enjoy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be pushing at season end in top ladder. So yeah, gonna try to push as high as possible. I want to finish as the highest lock bait player this season because yeah, I've been like all season the highest lock bait player in ladder. So I want to make sure that I finish as the highest lock bait player also if I was that all season, right? So that's gonna be my goal for this season. But it's gonna be quite hard when people like Riley are playing lock bait at season end. So yeah, let's see though. And we're in the first game here against this guy. Should actually be a really good matchup because this guy is playing balloon and I have a really fast cycle so I can always go for the rocket onto the balloon even though that's a minus one elixir trade. And also the fire spirit full counters the balloon with the um, rocket, even though when the miner's tanking for the tower, like when you go for the rocket and the fire spirit onto the balloon, the balloon always dies, no matter if it's full HP or not. So yeah, always good to have fire spirit and rocket against the balloon. And we forced out the evil Valkyrie with that princess. So that's really good getting the evil Valkyrie out of cycle. Because, yeah, we only really have the cannon against the evil Valkyrie, which is not the greatest. Because we don't have a yeah small tank or anything, right? So, good that we force out the evil Valkyrie, so he can't really make like a executioner Valkyrie push and pressure me with the balloon opposite lane or something. So, I can't like rocket both sides. But I could probably defend that kind of push, to be honest, also. So, not really worried about anything here. I just need to make sure I never really overcommit so I can always afford my rocket onto balloon and stuff and then I should be looking good. So my cannon puts out puts in a lot of work also. It counters the executioner quite well and also puts in quite good work against the Valkyrie and just gonna go for my late um, rocket right here. And yeah he might get back to his balloon faster than I will get back to my rocket but I'm never really worried about that because I can just go for a late rocket and if it if his balloon ever gets close to my tower I can just kite it with the cannon to buy myself some more time to get the rocket or something so yeah I can get a really good cannon down here because that's gonna clean up the executioner and also it will target the valkyrie right so that's gonna get a lot of value right there okay the executioner actually killed my cannon so I'll still have to kite the valkyrie with my evil wallbreaker so Okay, we, yeah, we got one evil warbreaker connection right there. He didn't play the best Valkyrie, so yeah, that was a really nice warbreaker connection right there. Just gonna make sure I always rocket the loon, and he goes for a really interesting um, Nado plus Zap, but that's not really gonna do anything, so okay, he gets a really good E spirit down there, hitting my warbreakers and my evil skellies. But okay, I was hoping for one goblin barrel shot right there, but unfortunately not. So just gonna make sure I counter the evil Valk once again with my cannon and he goes for the rocket but I can just get a really good, yeah, he goes for the balloon but I can just get a really good rocket down here. So okay no shots from the Valkyrie which is good also and yeah I'm just gonna set up my next cannon against the executioner because he can't really protect that executioner in any way. He goes for the Valkyrie but that's just more value for my cannon and I can just like get another cannon down if I really need to. So I'm not really worried about that. Like like him protecting his executioner because I know I will get back to another cannon. He get he gets a executioner shot onto the tower actually. Actually two shots, so I guess it was worth it for him to protect that executioner. But look at my barrel. My barrel got a lot of damage and yeah, I just get another big good rocket down here. So yeah. Always a lot of value with the rockets if I can hit something else with the balloon. So, <laughs> yeah, man, he just can't break through. Like, I always have my rocket ready, and because I have such a big um, damage lead, he's not even gonna, like, be able to catch the damage gap with miners onto my tower or anything. So, yeah, it's definitely gonna be game right here. There's no way he can get to my tower with anything. So,. Yeah, gonna throw the goblin barrel at his king tower and go for the cannon low because yeah, he's not responding. So GG's right here and I'll see you guys in the next game. 
we are in the next game here against Xali. So, okay, he goes for the fisherman in the back. Interesting. So, probably gonna be RG, right? You don't really see fisherman in any kind of deck at the moment. So, okay, just gonna get my princess low and make sure I hit the piggies with the fire spirit too. So, okay, just gonna go for my um, wall breakers and scabies onto the fisher. So, he goes for the little prince in the back. I just make sure that he still needs to respond to the wall breakers by going for the goblins in front. And now I can just go for my fire spirit to protect my right side princess. Fire spirit always kills the little prince with help of the with help of the princess. And he actually predicted me really good there with the arrows, knowing that I don't have the Valkyrie, so I would go for either Evo Skellies right there or goblins or whatever. So good prediction from him right there, knowing that I would do that. And that way he's actually gonna get quite good damage with the Mother Witch right now. I'll like tank for the Fisher for one shot with the Wall Breakers. And yeah, we force out the Rage by going for the Skellies in front of the Wall Breakers. So yeah, that was actually not too bad for us, even though he predicted us. And okay, that was really horrible Skellies right there. We got 1000 damage right there with the prin Princess Plus Barrel. Really good damage right there. And he actually has the level 14 ghost, so um, yeah, I, I think he shouldn't be playing the level 14 ghost because, yeah, exa for example, against my level 15 princess, the level 14 ghost doesn't one shot it anymore. So that's a really big disadvantage. Normally, when I go princess at the bridge and he ghosts onto that, I only would get one princess shot, but now if he goes onto my um, princess with the ghost, then my princess will get two shots onto the tower because the ghost just takes too much time to kill my princess. So yeah, level 14 ghost is really not it, but I guess respect to being that high with the level 14 ghost. So, okay. I'll actually let my princess go here because I feel like I will have to overcommit so much to protect it from the fisher and the little prince. So it's not really worth it to protect the princess right there. So. That's one of the most important things, I feel like, knowing when you need to protect your princess and we, when you need to, like, let it go. Because sometimes it's really worth it to protect the princess and sometimes you really should just let it go and reset. So, yeah, that's, like, one of the big differences between an average and good lockbait player, I would say. And I can go for the Goblin Barrel right there. So, that's gonna get... Okay, he goes for the evil skellies, good evil skellies, but yeah, not the best evil skellies also because, I mean, they counter my barrel, but they're not really gonna, gonna get any other value right here, and I mean, that's gonna be game, right, because he wasted the RG in the back not knowing I have the rocket, and now I just, like, I already back, I'm already back to my rocket, right, so <laughs> I can just rocket his tower again, and I just realized I didn't even hit the RG with the rocket, but... <laughs> it doesn't even matter, right? Because his RG doesn't get to my tower anyway. So, GG. We're in the next game here against Perry PNL. So, he goes for the wall breaker split and... Okay, that was a really bad bomber right there for him, from him. Because we still got one wall breaker connection. So, I have to make sure I cycle back to my skellies right here. So, I don't have to waste my cannon or anything onto the ghost. So, good skellies right there. That's gonna full counter the ghost. And I can actually support the skelly with my wall breaker. With my wall breakers. Because, yeah, that way he still has to respond to the wall breakers. And I can go for the barrel and princess to the side. Because the Tesla in the middle doesn't reach the princess to the side. So, we get two princesses shots right there, which is really good. And we forced out the evil bomber. Just gonna go for the cannon high. I don't really want to risk the bomber hitting my goblins and locking onto tower. I maybe could have activated the king tower there, but it's just too risky that he gets that um, evil bomber shot onto my goblins. So yeah, just gonna make sure I defend the evil bomber well instead of trying to activate the king tower and taking a lot of damage. So okay, we get another princess lock here. So that's gonna be at least three shots. Yeah, three shots. One more, please. Okay, nah, no, no more shots from the princess, but it's all good. This cannon will put in a lot of work, so I'll just surround the ghost once the cannon dies to, yeah, not take any shots onto the tower. 
And I'm also gonna support this with the wall breakers because that's really awkward for him to defend. Yeah, we forced out the Tesla once again, so really good wall breakers right there. And unfortunately, like two rockets aren't enough. If it was like two rockets, then it would definitely be game because I can just go for one rocket and he can't like take my tower after that. So I will just have to defend to the end of the game. And then I could go for another rocket onto his tower. But yeah, two rockets aren't enough, so I can't really do that. And yeah, I need to get like one more shot from the barrel or something else, like a princess shot or warbreaker connection, I guess. And okay, he goes for another drill. <laughs> Not too surprising, honestly. And I have to be a bit careful because he can line up the evil bomber onto the cannon here but he will cycle have to cycle three more cards to that okay he poisons the cannon so that poison's got uh, that cannon's gonna be dead so no evil bomber lineups for him here and i can just pressure him really nicely here this is evil bomber is that enough okay no way man the ghost was <laughs> not doing its job to be honest he takes one warbreaker connection but now two rockets aren't enough and one rocket is barely not enough so yeah, I will try to get another goblin shot or something onto the tower. Don't really want to risk getting to... Okay, that should connect onto tower, right? Yeah, that connects. So I need, just need to get one more rocket down and I'll actually ignore the ghost and drill here. So yeah, that's gonna be game and GG's. I'll see you guys for one more game. We're in the final game for today against Philly. So, okay, no way, man. Not the Wi-Fi symbol again. Please just disappear. Like no disconnects. Okay, <laughs> thank you. No disconnects, man. I have I've had that happen quite a lot in videos before. I also have gotten disconnect. So, <laughs> and also I've still won the games even after I got the disconnect. So yeah, kind of like had a crazy past with the Wi-Fi symbols already. So I always get scared when I see the Wi-Fi symbol pop up. And yeah, we are against Philly here. To be honest, out of all the Mega Knight Warbreaker players, he plays it by far the best, almost like all the time. So yeah, hopefully we can win here. And okay, I will have to waste my cannon onto that bandit right there. But I'm gonna be able to pressure him nicely with the evil Warbreakers here because he can't afford the Mega Knight to go onto that. So he has to waste the Barb Barrel and Zap, but we still get one Warbreaker connection because the goblins were tanking. So yeah. And he has to waste the evil bats because he just used the barb barrel and the zap to defend the wall breaker. So he didn't have any spell in cycle to defend the barrel. So completely wasted evil bats right there from him. So yeah, really good start to the game here. I'm always looking out to get a king tower activation against him because against the bandit and the mega knight, you can quite easily get the king tower activation, but he always manages to pressure really well with the bandit and mega knight so he makes sure i can't get the king tower activation and that was really unfortunate timing from us there so he gets a really good bar barrel um down onto everything there supporting his push and yeah i feel like i'm gonna get good damage in return here though because he just used his bar barrel and zap so he has to overspend onto that and we still get one wall breaker connection actually so yeah, we're not looking too bad though, even though he's in the lead. I will go for my cannon here because he's gonna zap, right? Yeah, he zaps that. Kind of a late zap, to be honest. I expected it a little bit earlier. Maybe my goblins would have cleared up the wall breakers in time, but I always know that he goes for like sneaky zaps onto the goblins to get like that split second stun to get the wall breaker connection onto tower. So I was ready for that with my cannon right there. And. I have to be a little bit careful of the Mega Knight because I don't have a like mini tank in my deck or like a tank like the Valkyrie. So I can't really distract the Mega Knight well, but okay, we forced out the Zap with the evil Warbreaker, so now he can't kill the now he can't kill the evil skellies on the right and okay, no, I kinda went for the Warbreakers too early, so my Warbreakers died to the Mega Knight. Not the best Warbreakers right there, but it's all good. We predict the miner, like we catch the miner with the goblins. He tried to predict my princess right there, but we managed to protect my princess. So, yeah, he didn't get that prediction. So, okay, he goes for the bandit on the right side. 
I have two princesses down, which is really annoying for him to deal with because he doesn't have a spell to take them out. So he kind of always needs to go for like minus to kill my prince, like for minus to kill my princesses. And I'll go for the cannon here to make sure the Mega Knight doesn't jump anywhere. Like that's really scary um, when the Mega Knight starts jumping and you don't have a like, yeah, tank to stop that. I can surround the Mega Knight quite a bit with like goblins or stuff but that's not really gonna yeah distract the mega knight for too long so always have to work with the cannon in this matchup against the mega knight and he goes for a really good minor evo zap knowing that i will try to protect my princess so yeah he gets a lot of damage with the um minor there honestly and okay he goes for another minor i have to be very careful here he goes for the zap too so i need to go for the wall breakers otherwise the bandit would have charged to my tower there we get really good, um, a really good fire spirit down there and kind of bad wall breakers from him there, yes. Okay, I'm gonna get my first rocket down here because he's not gonna be able to take my tower before I get my sec. Okay, no way. We got the wall breaker connection, so actually the rocket is gonna be enough. He's kind of mad about that, but even if the wall breaker didn't connect, he wouldn't have taken my tower, I'm sure about that. So yeah, GG's. Really nice video here and I'll see you guys for tomorrow. And like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye.